Hi everybody. Welcome. It's me, Jen, the Rainmaker, your native life and dream guide. If you are watching for the first time, please say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. And if you're catching the replay, please hit hashtag replay. I am actually going to burn some cedar right now because it is really important that even though I'm on social media, it's important for me to still be in integrity when it comes to what I would do if I was to be doing a ceremony right now. And because I am going to be engaging with you and we're going to be spending some time together and chatting about sexual energy and how you use it in the manifestation process, it is important that we have an offering that we're sending up to the creator. And oftentimes I see people that practice indigenous practices, yet they don't do certain things that they should be doing, nor do they pay respect to the people that they have learned from, which is also very important in the journey that we're on. Because we should be talking about where these practices are coming from. And we should also be in integrity when we're giving our offering, when we're doing prayers, and when we're coming together as a community. So again, even though this is a live and we're on social media, I still feel like an offering is required. And I didn't do this um, yesterday. I haven't done it a few times, but Spirit's letting me know that I need to be doing these things. So as people are coming on, one of the reasons why I burn a cedar, again, it's for the offering, for the wisdom that I'm going to be passing on. I also burn some Palo Santo, and that is just really to clear the energy, but Palo Santo will actually bring in good energy. It smells really great. It doesn't burn um, for a long time. It will go out quickly, but it is a medicine that we use when we are doing clearing, whether it's a home clearing or whether we're doing a clearing on ourselves. The difference between Palo Santo and Sage is that Sage is gonna clear out all energy, both good and bad, although I, those terms are um, a little misleading, so it's really just clearing out all energy, heavy energy, dense energy, incompatible energy so i wanted to make sure that i'm very clear i did meditate before i came on today because i don't typically just jump on a live and say oh this is what i'm going to talk about it's always coming through spirit and i basically ask what is the message that needs to be shared now and also because the live that I did yesterday, so many people have reached out to me afterward and expressed their gratitude and engaged. So for me, I love the engagement. If the message resonates with you, go ahead and share or tag somebody that you think could use it. I know some people aren't out of their spiritual closet, so you can message it directly to somebody or just give me a little love and um, engage with me. I usually will go through the comments after, but please go ahead and, and put your comments up there. Um, I'm gonna talk about this, and then I'm also gonna share some techniques with you to actually clear your sexual energy. So make sure that you stay tuned. But first I wanna talk about what sexual energy is and why we need it in order to manifest. What is the importance of it? So sexual energy is different than sex, although we are gonna be talking a little bit about sex as well. Sexual energy is really just that energy of sex that we all have within us. Males and females, we all carry the sexual energy and we are always running our sexual energy 24 seven. Most people though, don't realize how to harness it and how to use it to manifest their dream lives. In the course that I teach, Dream You, 
there is a specific practice. There are a few practices that we do when it comes to clearing out our sexual energy and tapping into it. Because if you think about it, sexual energy is literally the energy of creation itself, meaning that when a man and a woman come together, they can create life. If you want to manifest your dream life, you're going to need to be able to harness that sexual energy. And you're also going to be able to, well, you need to be able to separate your sexual energy from any partners that you have been with. When I'm doing the dream work and we're doing certain practices, one of the practices is actually clearing your sexual energy from any past partners. Why is that important? I'll tell you why it's important for both men and women. For women, we will carry the sexual energy of past partners in our womb space, which is also known as our medicine bowl. It is our area of creation. It is where we are giving birth to life and our dreams. So I don't want you to look at this as something of a physical fertility thing, because I know that there are some women that cannot have children, but you still have, even if you've had a hysterectomy, you still have an energetic womb. You still have that space there. What happens is that as women, when we have sex with a partner, we are literally the receivers. The yoni, right, is receiving the lingam. And so what happens is, is that every time we are with a partner, and again, this is for men and women, we are taking on that energy from that person. We can literally become that person. Have you ever heard the saying that when you're with somebody so long, you begin to look like them? Oftentimes you will begin to act like them. You might begin to have the same thoughts, the same feelings, the same emotions, the same mannerisms for people that have been together for a really long time. Now, whether you're in a, a sexual relationship with somebody for a really long time or not, even if you just have sex with somebody one night, you still have that energy in your space until you clear it. Many times women are looking for their dream man or dream partner, or they want to be closer to their current partner. And one of the reasons why that, that might not be possible for them is because if you've never cleared out that space, when you are having sex with a man, he cannot see you. He cannot see the truth of who you are, and he cannot be physically connected to you because energetically, he's picking up on all of the other men that you've been with throughout your life. It is the same thing when you, as a man, are having sex with a woman, You are not going to have that deep connection that you're looking for if you have not cleared your energy from all of the women that you have been with. And oftentimes, and I've actually seen this, I have literally seen when I'm speaking with a man, I can see women courted to him. They're there energetically in his space. And they might not even have been in a relationship with him for the past five or 10 years, but they're there and they're in his space. And you're not going to be able to have a relationship, like a deep, deep relationship with a man like that. Same thing as a woman. I've seen that there are men in their space and they're looking for these relationships, but they haven't done anything to clear that energy. 
Then there are also people that have experienced sexual trauma and they have never cleared that energy, yet they're trying to manifest. And how can you manifest when the seat of creation is literally in your womb space for men? They call it a hara. So you still have an energetic womb what we would call an energetic womb. It is still a place for you as a man to create. And that energy sits at the base of your spine and you should be able to tap into it and raise it all the way up to the crown of your head, whether you're having sex with somebody or not. When we talk about your energy centers, there are seven of them. Some people call them chakras. In my tradition, we call them totokayanos. And the very first energy center is the one that is what some people would refer to as the root. And in order to reach enlightenment and manifest, you need to be able to tap into that energy and be able to raise it at will. When you can do that and when you can clear out all of the sexual energy, the past partners and everything, and the traumas that you have had, you will see that your manifesting will happen faster for you. And you'll be manifesting beautiful things instead of sort of the same thing over and over, or the same relationships over and over, or the same patterns over and over. One way that you can clear your energy, I'll just give you sort of a quick meditation. And I'm just going to allow this to flow through me. So what you would do is you would basically close your eyes and you would just tap into whether you're a man, the energy of that space there at the base of your spine, or whether you're a woman, you're tapping into the energy of your womb your medicine bowl, and you just ask, who is in my sacred space? And you're either going to see somebody's face, you're going to hear somebody's name, you're going to see a color, it could be somebody, there's a color there, there's a feeling, there's an emotion, whatever it is, you're going to basically ask that the energy be removed and you're going to see See it. You're just going to imagine it exiting through your navel, going out and transforming into something beautiful. The other way that you can do this is you can command that person to leave my sacred space now. You can literally say, leave my sacred space now. You are no longer welcome here. This is my space. And you can see them leaving. You can also imagine that you have a sword in your arm and you're basically just going to swing down with the sword, cutting any cords between you and that person. And ask that that energy be released and removed from your sacred space. Many times the work that we're doing is intention-based. It is our intention. I'm giving you this tool, a couple of different ways that you can use it, but intuitively, you might do something different. Just by me bringing this topic into your awareness, you might say, you know what? I'm going to, when I do it, I'm going to just imagine that that person floats away. Or I'm going to literally kick them out of my space. Or you may say, you know what, I don't feel like that worked, so I'm going to reach out to somebody who can help me and assist me in that process. I've had womb healings done. I've had different... Um, Healings done where people have cut the cords in many different ways. So there's not necessarily a right way. There's a right way for you. And again, you want to go to somebody who you resonate with, who you're drawn to. 
And if this is a service that you're seeking, you can basically ask the spirit or creator to connect you with somebody that can help you with this because it's important. You want to have a great sex life. You really do. And so many of us, it's like this taboo topic that we don't want to talk about. But come on, we're all adults. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for our parents having sex. For me, a lot of what I do is to help my students increase the quality of their lives. And guess what? The quality of their lives is greatly increased when they're able to clear out this space and they're able to have sex with their partner and feel free and confident and sexy. And for men to feel viral and wanted and appreciated. So, and we need to come together as men and women. We cannot continue to tear our men down because we have male and female energy within us. So every time you bash the complete male population, you're bashing the male side of yourself. We have to have a healthy relationship with both the male and the female energy. If you're attracting the same type of men in your life, it may be because you have not done this healing work and started to look at what I would call your underworlds and separate your energy. And you should be separating your energy even if it's your husband after every single time that you're having sex because this is your sacred space in order to create and manifest. It needs to be cleared. Nobody belongs there. Your kids, nobody belongs there. This is yours. It's important because when we are able to tap in and when we are able to have that deep connection that we're seeking within another person and when we are able to climax because I've met and I've talked to many women who have either never had an orgasm or currently don't have orgasms. And when you orgasm, that's actually one of the best times to manifest, both in the dream world and in the waking world. Let me tell you how. When you're having an orgasm, you think about what you want to manifest, whether it be your dream home or car or your dream job or business or more business, money, whatever it is. You think about that when you're having an orgasm. I'm not telling you to do it all the time, right? But sometimes you might have that intention. And I think this is a great practice that if you have a partner, you could do it. And then if they're just like, well, I don't know what this stuff is with this man, I guarantee you they'll be all about it. <laughs> Manifesting, law of attraction, they'll be all for it. You'll make a believer out of them. If you do have a partner that's willing to practice with you, then you can both think about the same thing that you want to manifest to increase that power even more. Same thing when you are dreaming. If you're having sex in your dream, if you can get yourself to orgasm and think about what you want, hmm, powerful stuff right there. It'll help you manifest faster. Fast, fast, fast. And that's what we all want, right? I mean, seriously. When I started to do the dream work, the reason why I fell in love with it is because I saw the results fast. And out of everything that I had done, I had never seen results like that. That's why I made a believe right of me. But I still do stuff in my waking reality to support that dream work that I'm doing. That's my foundation, and I still do stuff in my waking reality. But I believe that we don't have to wait years and years to manifest our dream life. We can quantum leap. We can quantum orgasm into what we want. The other thing is that you don't want to always be having your sexual energy running so high all the time. So how do you do that, both men and women? Basically, what you do is, again, you close your eyes. You're going to tap into the seven energy centers. 
and you're going to go to the first one and the first one should be at about 10 percent and you just say like shut down to 10 percent second one same thing shut down to 10 percent third one you want to have it at about 70 percent it can just be your intent shut down to 70 percent the rest of them you can have open to 100. I thought it was really funny when somebody was like, well, I don't want my throat open to 100 because then I'm going to speak my truth and hurt people's feelings. And I'm like, that's kind of funny. Um, but this person was working on not being so hurtful with their words. So they kept their throat at like 80%, 90%, right around there. You'll know if you're running your sexual energy high because you might men or women might start to look at you like oh you know or like you're talking to somebody and they're taking it as as though you are being flirtatious and you can start to play with it so you can shut it down and then go out and about in the world right and see what the engagement is and then you can open it up and you can be at 100 percent. like what does that look like what does 50 percent look and feel like automatically Usually, when you're having sex, your energy centers will open up and, and go naturally. But if they're stuck, then try doing the meditation. And again, you're just sort of, when you're doing a meditation and you're going through all of your energy centers, so if you feel like your throat is blocked or your, um, your heart or your throat is blocked or any of those, you're basically just going to close your eyes and you're going to tap into all of them individually. And what you want to do is you want to have a grounding cord. You always have one, but you want to have yours as wide as the width of your hips. So what I do is I will release, I imagine there's a lever and I release my old one and it just boom goes down straight into the center of the earth. And then I get a new one and I make it as wide as the width of my hips. And I anchor it with something fun and whimsical. I really like panda bears. So I usually do a big panda bear in the middle of mine. And I imagine it going all the way down to the center of the earth. And it anchors in. So then what I do is as my eyes are closed, I'm going through all of my energy centers. And I'm just seeing what, what color do I feel like is there? Do I feel like somebody's there? Do I feel a feeling or an emotion or anything? And if I do, if it's something incompatible, then I just release it and let it go down that grounding cord, which is why it's so big. It's as wide as the width of my hips. So I just see it going down and clearing. You want to clear these energy centers on a daily basis. Even if you make it part of your routine, when you're in the shower, it does not have to take you long. Shower's a great place to clear and cleanse your auric field. I take like three showers a day. I will take one in the morning, I go to the gym and then I take one. Sometimes I'll take one before I have to leave the house to a meeting or to take my daughter, and then I'll take one at night. It's very healing for me. I'm not in there forever, but I enjoy it. And I've always been drawn to the water, always, always, always. And I often will take baths, very long baths. People make fun of me, but I don't care. It feels good to me and I'm cleansing my aura, and I'm clearing myself, and I'm meditating, and I'm doing all my things. You have to find what works for you, though. I'm giving you some ideas. I'm not telling you that you absolutely have to do it this way. In fact, what I'm telling you is do it this way. Try it out. See if it works for you, and then make some tweaks according to what your intuition guides you to. The other way to tap into that energy is you can close your eyes and just imagine that at the base of your spine and all the way up through your spine, that whole spinal cord becomes a snake. The snake in almost any indigenous culture, many different... Um, I don't want to say religions because that's not the right word, but many different cultures, I'll just say cultures, the snake is representative of enlightenment and it represents kundalini, which represents the sexual energy. And it's the snake and it's usually sort of crisscrossed because it's the male and the female energy. 
okay? And it's running up the base of the spine. So you can envision, you can close your eyes and you can envision that the snake is running up the back and that boom, it comes up like this over your head. And you can just tap in and play with the energy, start to raise it at will. Like right now I'm getting hot because I'm talking about it and I'm tapping into it. And that might be an indicator for you. It's an indicator for many people that when you're raising that kundalini, it gets you hot. These are things that you can like practice with your partner. You can practice raising it and seeing how they react to you. Like shut, shut the energy down and then boom, raise it and just see their reaction to you. Play with it. Have fun with it. Everything doesn't have to be so serious. Yes, we want to honor the medicine. We always want to honor the medicine and treat it with sacredness. But we can also have fun while we do these things. And so many people, they, I see them in relationships and I have conversations with them and they're not being playful anymore. It's like a chore to them. It shouldn't be a chore. You should enjoy it. So if you're not, you can set your intention out there and you can ask. Here's the thing. Before I started like officially doing the dream work, I was already doing stuff. And now that I've been studying some of this brain science and different things, I've noticed that what I was doing actually is back by science. I'm like, pretty cool. I was already doing it intuitively. One of the things that I was doing before I was going to bed is I was asking myself, but really what it was is I was asking the creator and my unconscious certain questions that I wanted answered. And I would ask for certain things to be solved while I was sleeping. So for you, you could say, if you've had any sexual trauma or if you have people that are still in your energetic field, you can say, how can I clear this energy from my space? And maybe something like all of a sudden you wake up in the middle of the night and boom, the answer's there. Or you wake up in the morning, boom, the answer's there. Or somebody comes to you. And boom, there's a resource, there's a book, there's something. The answer comes to you. Because one of the things I know to be true is that our life is based on the questions that we ask ourselves. So don't make statements, close-ended statements. Like I hear people say all the time, I can't afford that. If you want it, ask yourself, how can I afford it? Because then your subconscious has to go to work on figuring out the answer. You're tapping into the creator. You're tapping into your subconscious that's going to go to work to figure out the answer. So for you, it could be how can I tap into my sexual energy and use it for manifesting? How can I heal from past traumas? Thank you for the love. I can't see what it is, but thank you. I appreciate it. How can I um, tap into my kundalini energy. Like, there's kundalini meditations. I've done that. There's kundalini yoga. There's all sorts of different things that you can do. You can do different meditations. You can use some of the techniques that I shared with you this evening. Um, but you do want to at least have it in your awareness and start to work with it and start to play with it and start to see how it changes your manifesting. And some people might ask, can, can you do it if you're masturbating, right, with an orgasm? Yes, you can. You can ask for what you want, manifest. You know, like, oh, I want my dream car, or my dream man, or I don't know, to travel to Bali. Whatever it is that you want, right? What I would encourage you, though, is, again, I feel like one of the big pieces here, too, is to stop using the closed-ended statements and stop start to use that time before you go to sleep and ask yourself over and over and over again. You don't have to say it out loud. You can just say it in your head over and over and over again. How can I manifest my dream life? How can I? And, again, 
This isn't necessarily something that I teach in my dreaming course. So that is specifically about the Toltec dreaming manifestation processes. That's very specific with dream planting and the exercises and the Kundalini, different things that we do for enlightenment and for sexual energy. I'm giving you some other tools though that I have used and that I also share with my you know, students and clients that I've had in the past because I think it's important. You should have something, right, to be able to use, to be able to start to tap into because I think oftentimes we hear you need to fix it, you need to fix it, and you want to, and you're thinking like, well, how do I fix it, right? So I'm just giving you some things that have worked for me and that have worked for people in the past that I have also worked with. One of the things that I did, it was called the womb, right? And we were doing, you know, a mantra and we were talking about how our womb is sacred and how it's used for creating and healing from past traumas and letting those things go. A big part of you moving forward in your journey also and being able to tap into this is forgiveness. If you've ever had a time in your life where you felt like you didn't really want to have sex, but you did it anyway, you could still be carrying that emotion and it's affecting every area of your life and you don't even realize it. And it's affecting your ability to manifest because it's still there. It's in your sacred, it's in your medicine bowl that you use to create with. So if that's the case, you have to practice forgiveness, not only for yourself, right, but for the other person. Because oftentimes we are ashamed, right? So many women that I work with, they have shame around their bodies and around sex. They're ashamed to talk about it. They're ashamed to share their experiences. They're ashamed to say what has happened. You know, if you've ever had a miscarriage or if you've ever had an abortion, these are all things that energetically need to be cleared. And you probably ha have to forgive yourself. You've probably been carrying that with you all of these years and not realizing that, oh my God, this has affected all of my relationships and it's affected my ability to manifest my dream life. So I'm going to be coming on, and again, if people are engaging with me and sharing or tagging or anything, then I'll come on and I'll continue to share different things that you can use on your journey towards manifesting your dream life, as well as talking about the healing journey and talking about some different things that maybe you have it's thought about when it comes to the manifestation process or when it comes to really, I mean, manifesting is really about increasing the quality of your life. It's about enjoying the moments. It's about creating amazing memories and, and being in the moment, like being present with those people that we love. And I believe that we are all worthy of love. We're all worthy of love and being loved and being seen for who we truly are. But how can we be truly seen if we have these things? It's like a mask that we wear. It's a shield of armor that we carry around. Many people, the energy of weight is from abuse. And it's because it's, it's there as protection protection. It's in armor, but it's not really protecting us. And here's something I want to say. I know that you're doing the best that you can do with the tools that you have. I get it. I don't want you to feel guilty. Like, oh my gosh, I'm this old and I've been carrying this stuff around for this long. Why? I was talking with a friend last night and she had been in an abusive relationship and she's now divorced. 
And she was asking me, I hadn't talked to her in a really long time. It's been some years. And we were talking, you know, she, we just recently got like reacquainted and we were catching up. And one of the things that she was telling me was that, and she asked me, like, what do you think about forgiveness? And I was telling her, I think it's a big piece of the process. It's needed. It's necessary. And she was saying, you know, for years I've carried this around. I haven't been able to forgive and I haven't even been able to look at it. And you can, and I could hear the sadness in her voice. And it was almost like, why? And I, and I told her like, look, here's the thing. I had had, I've had like many things, you know, happen throughout my life. Right. And there was trauma when I was a child. And I had done a lot of healing work around it. Then about a year ago, I remembered something that happened to me when I was like 19, 20 years old. Something that I had suppressed. Something that I was not able to face at that time. I didn't have the tools. So I blocked it out. But then after I did all of this healing work, I, it came back to me. It was like, boom, in my face. And I was like, oh my God, I totally forgot about that. I totally forgot about that. Not only did I forget about that, but there was so many other things that had happened after that. And I realized in that moment, I was kind of like questioning, but I was like, God, why now? And the answer was because now you have the tools and you're ready to face it. And you're ready to heal from it. But when it happened, you weren't. So you did the best that you could. So I just want to say that to you, that if something has happened and you haven't healed from it, or maybe you've been trying, it's okay. Some people say there's levels to the game. I say there's layers to the game. We have to keep peeling back the layers and seeing what's there to get to the truth of who we are. It's not necessarily hard, right? But it can be for a moment in time as we're going through it, as we're processing it, it can be painful. It can bring up some memories. It can make us very sad. But when we address it and when we face it, it's freeing. It will release us. It will help us to let these things go so that we can manifest our dream lives. I'm gonna give you a few takeaways. Everybody, everybody needs to clear their sexual energy, their womb space, or for men, their hara. If you haven't done that work, you need to. Not saying that you need to right now, but I'm saying that you need to. Whether you're in a relationship or you're looking for one, it will change your life. It will improve the quality of your life. It will improve the quality of your relationships. If you're not able to have orgasms, you will be able to have orgasms. You will be able to have amazing sex. But you know what? In order to have amazing orgasms and amazing sex, you need to first say that that's what you want. You have to ask for the things that you want. And then you ask, how can you get them? You have to say that that's what you want. I was talking with somebody today and they were telling me all these things that they wanted, and I'm like, well, and they're thinking, like, I need to dream bigger, and I'm like, mm-hmm. And I was like, what do you want? Do you want financial freedom? Because one of the things, one of the words that they, one of the statements that they said was, I just want to breathe. Just want to breathe. And oftentimes I hear people say, I just want to be comfortable. I just want to pay my bills. Is that what you really want? Most people want financial and time freedom. So I told her, let me hear you say it. 
So she said, I want financial freedom. I said, when do you want it? She said, now. So what do you want? I want financial freedom. When do you want it? I want it now. See, for me, it would be, I want financial freedom. I want it now. I want financial freedom. I want it now. I am financially free now. I am grateful that I am financially free now. Part of rainmaking is like teleporting to where you want to be. It is being in that space. As rainmakers, when we do the rain dance, we feel the mud between our toes. We feel the rain on our body. Our clothes become drenched. We feel the corn swaying at our shoulders, and we are praying in gratitude. We do not pray for what we want because that is praying in the lack of something. That is acknowledging the lack of what we have. We pray rain. There is a difference. We pray in gratitude for what we have. We declare it. We feel it. We are there. We speak it into existence. Every time you speak your word, you are speaking your future into existence. Stop saying what you don't want. Stop limiting yourself. Catch yourself. What do you want and declare it? It is yours, but you have to declare it. You have to say that you want it. You cannot be silent about it anymore. You have to say to yourself what you want. And if you're scared, it's okay. But you have to do the work to move past it. Nobody is going to do it for you. I tell people all the time, do not tell me that you want to make it rain if you are not going to show up for the rain dance. I don't have time for it. Like, I love you, but when you're ready to make it rain, then show up to the rain dance. And I will tell you what to do, and I will guide you, but I cannot do it for you. You have to say what you want and claim it because it will be yours. Dream it into existence. When you ask and when you seek and when you get those signs, Pay attention to them every time that I have ever asked for help, that I have ever gone and prayed. And I have somebody that comes into my life or a book or a tool. I am in gratitude and I use the information. I do not sit around and say, well, what's going on? I see it all the time. People, they ask for signs, and there's like a big sign in their face, and they're like, where's the sign? I'm looking for the sign. Like books falling at their feet, or people coming into their lives. You have to move. You have to act. You have to speak what you want and declare it over your own life the same way that you would your children. My daughter knows that she is a blessing because I tell her she is a blessing. My daughter knows that she is love. I know that I'm a blessing. My mom tells me I'm a blessing. I put a post up today and said, my mom said I'm a savant, so it must be true. My mom has spoken life over to me, but you know what? Even if you didn't have a parent that didn't speak life over to you, allow me to do that for you right now. You are worthy. You are love. You are a blessing. You are needed on this earth. You can have your dream life. You can have everything that you desire. In fact, you already do. It is yours. I pray perfect health for you. I pray wealth for you and your family, abundance and prosperity. I pray that everything that you have ever dreamed is already here. It is on its way to you and your family. I pray love for you and amazing memories. And I pray a life filled with peace and harmony and laughter and joy. 
And I pray that all your heart's desires are already answered for you and your family. I pray that you have amazing sex and an amazing relationship, connections, people that support you and that love on you. I pray that everything that you have been praying for is already answered. And the only prayer that is needed in this moment is thank you, thank you, thank you. Gratitude, because it's here. So thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me. Thank you. Bye.